Yeah. Well, hey, we've got a lot to cover, Shay, so let's just get right into it. And I know you'd kill me if we didn't start with Tennessee beating the Florida Gators for the first time since 2016, a five-game skid. Tennessee uh-huh. wins 38-33. to But like you said, my God, it looked like a <laughs> potential another heartbreak in, in the best post I saw out there, Shane. You shared it with me. The guy with the shirt over his head with the PTSD Vietnam helicopters in the background. I'll share that on YouTube now, but uh, that perfectly sums it up. I'll be honest with you, Shane. I gave up on this game. Here's how I watch the games, just for the people. I don't know if they care or not, but I, you know, I got every game on. I got four TVs up, and when a game like that's in hand, I mute it, and I lock in on, on the other ones because there's so much action going on, and and Arkansas, Texas A&M right. was such a big game. Arkansas was driving to score. And next thing I know, I look over, I'm my God, Florida's got the ball. They're down five. They're driving to win this damn ball game. So I had to I had to go back and rewatch it. But man, how much was your heart beating, Shane, when Florida got that onside? You know, Anthony Richardson was red hot in this ball game. All the Tennessee fans making fun of Anthony Richardson for the last week. Man, he almost could not be stopped, and it just felt like it was going to be another disaster, didn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, because Mike, I just want one game, man. I want one Tennessee game that I'm not walking away defeated, feeling. You know, it's like, I, don't get me wrong, I'm ex- I'm ecstatic that we beat the Florida Gators, but there was that moment we couldn't even. There was no enjoying that game, the fourth quarter, because it felt like we've been here. We've we've watched this movie before. And, and so, you know, there's 100,000 people in there. I'm going to tell you right now, about 92,000 of them knew exactly how this thing was going to end. It was going to be a train wreck. And how do I get out of here so quick? You know, that's, that's exactly what we all thought in the back of our mind. And, and it was, you know, it's funny because I'm sitting there and, and I'm like, you know, well, I, I'm first off the two point conversion, which we'll get to, which is the dumbest move ever. Uh, but then after that, I, you know, I'm calculating, I'm like, you know, we're, we're up. What the was score it? Was 30, uh, 38 uh, to 21, so 17 points with less than, yeah, less than eight seven, minutes seven. remaining. Right. So we're 17 points, and we're like, da, da, da. And I'm, I'm watching. I was like, okay, yeah, they scored. You know, whatever. I mean, I, I get that. That was crazy. But then I'm like, you know, and I, th- I got PTSD <laughs> trying to think. I don't even want to think about it because I feel like I'm in the, in, the, in the underground now, and I'm like going back in time. I don't even want to talk about it. It's just, just, just put it this way, Mike. I just thought for a second for, for, about two minutes that we're, we're going to lose right. this thing, man. And, and I don't want to take away from the victory, but it was a great game. And honestly, whichever way it goes, you know, we're going to talk about an MVP. My MVP this week is going to be either one of these quarterbacks. If Tennessee wins, which they did hookers, right. my guy, but if Anthony, Anthony Richardson won in the Florida Gators, I'm giving him the MVP awards because it was like two guys in the backyard playing football, you know, and it was like, whoever has the ball last is going to win this thing. It was just a great, great game. I don't want to take away from, from the moment and ruin it with what is because, but there was a, there was a moment that I was like, this is over. Well, I'm I'm never watching this. I'm I'm thinking about, I already put in my two week notice for that SEC podcast. I said, fuck, I'm sorry. I said to hell with football. I ain't going to, I'm just done. If we lose this game, I will never watch a Tennessee football game again, or at least a Tennessee Florida game. That's where I was, Mike. I mean, I was already putting on the GPS, the nearest low, so I could just walk around in misery, you know, and think to myself, how did we screw this one up? But we didn't. We didn't. We got it. And, and and so maybe it's a new leaf. Maybe it's a new team, you know, but it's a feeling. I'll tell you this right now that Tennessee fans aren't right. used to having. And, and for me, Shane, key to the game. I really thought Florida, they weren't perfect, but they were playing nearly the first perfect first half. They were up 14 mm-hmm. to 10, Shane, just a, slightly over two minutes remaining. They punt it all the way down to uh, the one yard line. Tennessee's backed up on their own corner. And what happens, Shane? Hendon Hooker takes control of this ball game, drives some 99-yard yeah. touchdown. Brew McCoy touchdown. It was it was almost one of those where, you know, you didn't even want your quarterback risking the ball there, but he knew exactly yeah. where he was going. His pinpoint accuracy scored a touchdown with seven seconds remaining in the in the half. Tennessee takes a 17 to 14 lead, and you're sitting here saying, "Well, help." Tennessee's turned it over twice. They're not playing that efficiently, yet they're winning at halftime. They come right out, 10-play, 73-yard touchdown drive to open the third. And at that point, you felt like Tennessee was going to dominate, and they did. 
Uh, six of six in the red zone. That was huge. Five touchdowns there. And you you nailed it, Shane. SEC Offensive Player of the Week has got to be Hendon Hooker. 22, 28, yeah. 348 passing yards, two touchdowns passing, zero interceptions. And how about this? 112 rushing and another score led the Vols in rushing. He was just a man on fire there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I put it out there, Shane. I truly believe this. I'm not saying he's going to win the Heisman. I'm not even saying he should be the front runner necessarily. It's still very young in the season. But we have got to put him on the short list of true yeah. Heisman candidates. They've, they've got a tough road ahead. He's going to have to earn it against the likes of Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky. But for now, Hendon Hookers belongs on that list. Yeah, without a doubt. The guy took over. It was it was the Hooker show, man. And and, and again, it was the Anthony Rich. But here's two quarterbacks mm -hmm. that had a lot of – there was a lot of rumors. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of mumbling behind them. You know, Hooker's not as efficient as he was last year. Anthony Richardson, one hit wonder against Utah. You know, the stat that he's got, uh, what was it, more tackles than touchdowns mm -hmm. or some something like that. And it was like these boys came in dialed up and ready to play, man. And they, they were just on point. And, and that's why I was saying if Florida would have won this game, we'd be talking about how great a, great a game Hooker had, but Anthony Richardson was right. the MVP. And, and my, it, because here's another guy that just, Tennessee took away the running game. They they sold out to the run. They weren't going to let ETN and, and what's his name get get any yards. They were going to load the box. And so we knew we were going to force Anthony Richardson to throw the ball. And given what he's done the last couple of weeks, that's a great script. But Anthony he did not no. back down. It, he he was very efficient. He was able, you know, those mid those little short passes, that's what he was been really struggling with, those 10, 15 mm -hmm. yard routes. And he was on, like on a dime. And 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 he was running for his life a lot of the game. So um, it was just a fantastic performance by both quarterbacks. It just just so happens we had we had a few more we had we had a little more help on the outside. I will say this: this these young receivers mm -hmm. stepped up, Tillman out. These guys stepped up and 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 played their lights out too. So I, I think it was just a great performance all the way around. We won't talk about defense. Defense, we'll just we'll just skip that <laughs> part. But offense, you mentioned the receivers, Shane. <laughs> Brew McCoy, five catches, 102 yards, and that touchdown right before half, so huge. Ramel Keaton, that's the guy that really stood up with the. Uh, and he mm -hmm. laid out for that one catch, three catches for 58 yards. Not gaudy statistics, but he was huge in this ball game. Yeah. But you mentioned it, Anthony Richardson. Man, put some respect on this guy's name. I put the uh, prize pick selections under passing yards. Oh, my God, that was the dumbest pick <laughs> I could have made. Whoops. 453 passing yards for Richardson, two touchdowns through the air, one interception. And, of course, that was on the you know the final Hail Mary attempt. You, you put it all on the line there, so he didn't – risk the ball mm -hmm. uh other than that and he also had 62 rush rushing yards two more touchdowns on the ground again like you're saying if, if florida pulled out this miraculous win we'd all be touting anthony richardson once again maybe not for the heisman after you know two low performances but you know maybe that would have given him some momentum heading into the rest of the season but uh now shane and, and this is not on billy napier i want to give this guy credit i thought he called Nearly a flawless game. You know, balls to the mm -hmm. wall. Had to be aggressive as hell. But after losing this game, Florida has now lost 10 of 12 SEC ball games. That is just a wild, wild statistic. And, and again, most of that's yeah. on Dan Mullen. So, again, I'm not calling out Billy Napier for that. The only issue I take with him, and you mentioned it, Shane, down 11, <laughs> score a touchdown, go for two. Yeah. What in the hell is he thinking? I mean, being down nine doesn't help you. Uh, you know, you want you want to be down ten. Yeah, I'm. Well, I'm watching it, and I and I'm in my head. I'm doing the math, and I'm like, what? I don't get it. Did he ever come out and explain why he did it? I mean, because that's a big deal. A field goal and a touchdown are two different things. I mean, they easily could the way they were playing. They, there was a real shot they could have gotten field mm -hmm. goal range and, and 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 sent this thing to overtime, but. It, 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 I was scratching my head, you know. At first, I was just ex I was upset that they scored a right. touchdown, but then excited we got the two point. Then I got to think, I was like, why the hell did they run a two point conversion? It don't make sense to me. So if it don't make sense to me, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> the the but I, you know they got these charts. You know that's one thing we got on old Lyle Jones back in the right. day. Uh, 
these these charts. I mean, what chart is telling you to go for two in that situation? Yeah, the only thing I can think of, I've seen some people explain it this way, Shane. If they if they get it there, they're down nine. You score another touchdown. You kick the extra point, then you get a field goal. You win it instead of tying the ball game. But this just it's illogical to to go for two the first time around. It you know I mean it it shudders the momentum and and had they kicked the extra point, had they kicked the next extra point. There at the end, when they're throwing a hail mary, they could be kicking a field goal to force overtime. I mean, it just yeah. it just made no sense. So I don't know. I think that's one Billy Napier is going to have to live with. But but maybe his mindset, Shane, was just you know ultra aggressive. We're going for the win. We're not playing for the tie to force overtime because we'll mm-hmm. lose in an atmosphere like that. Uh, that's the only issue I got with Billy Napier. And you know, Florida is not a program. Moral victory is not in their DNA, but. I come away from that, Shane, if, if I'm a Florida fan, saying we got a, we had a team that was picked to lose that game. I don't know if right. Tennessee has a vastly better roster. They, they obviously have a little bit deeper of a roster. But I think Billy Napier looked at it and said, you know, this is our method to win in the ballgame. And he nearly pulled it off when, it, when I think a lot of other coaches would have come up short when um, you know the defense has given up touchdowns left and right, I mean there was a there was a stretch there. Shane Tennessee scored four touchdowns on four drives. They never punted yeah. in the ball game. They the, the only reason they didn't score is because they fumbled twice, and they went for it there at the end of the game to try to kill the clock and came up a little short. But not a punt. I mean they didn't even need a punter on Saturday, and man, all of a sudden Tennessee already looking like a legitimate team, but the polls are out. I know we don't care too much about them, but they're in the top 10. You got to feel great if you're a Tennessee Vol, 4-0, going into the bye week. You know what? First time 4-0 since 2016, man. And and it's not, like I said, it's not a sensation volunteer fans get to enjoy too much. (laughs) So uh, I'm ecstatic. Obviously, there were some mistakes in this game on both sides of the ball, especially on the defense side. A lot of blown coverages of uh, the Florida Gators. And you you mentioned that one stat earlier about the SEC teams. I, again, I feel like it's a little bit more mm-hmm. deceiving. Um, this this program is not going down the same path that it was. Um, I, I think this is a team that bounced back. You know, tough defeat with Kentucky. You know, tough fought ball game with South Florida. And, and a lot of people are counting them out at that point. This is a program that's got a lot of fight in them. Uh, they're going to win a lot of games. And if they can – if they can – Get some depth, man. Keep some people healthy. Florida, Florida's going to be all right, man. Uh, because again, you've got that X factor back there at quarterback that can win games, and he almost won yeah. this one. And I love the fact after the game, Shane Josh Heupel credits, you know, the the fans, the atmosphere, the resiliency of his team, and I really love mm-hmm. the fact that uh, you know someone asked him about just how wild of an atmosphere it was, and he. He didn't say it was wild at all. That's how it's supposed to be up there on Rocky Top. <laughs> hey, uh, man, uh, what a great night on campus in, 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 in Rocky Top, man. Like, fan base, uh, unbelievable energy. Knew it would be that way, man, but it even surpassed my expectations. Vol walk was unlike anything I've ever seen as a uh, college football player or college coach, man. And, and uh, the energy inside the stadium was electric. Um, you guys are a huge part of this win tonight. Appreciate uh, everything that you guys have done here as we've tried to build this program. Uh, really excited for our players, just the growth that they've shown, the ability to compete no matter what the score was, no matter what was going on in the football game, just resilient and fierce competitors and <clears throat> where we've grown in, in, uh, in the time that I've been here. Just really proud of our players. There's a whole lot that we can do a whole lot better, but uh, – the uh, the goal for us is to find a way to win uh, each Saturday that we're on the field and, and be the best football team, and uh, we were able to do that tonight. And, and uh, great game, man. So it was fun having a lot of VFLs back too, man. We had a lot of former players back. It's great to have guys, I mean, from all eras too, the 80s, the 90s, 2000s, 2010s. It's uh, it's important that uh, that we have those guys around. I appreciate those guys making the trip and, and being a part of this tonight. Josh, after a week of buildup and obviously today not a real typical game day for you guys, what is it like? What does it mean to this program to win a game? What do you mean not a real typical game day? Uh, I mean, going on game day, obviously you have game day here, all that stuff, all the sort of the pomp and circumstance of today. What does it mean to win a game in this, in this situation? Yeah, uh, the game day atmosphere, that, that is, this is Rocky Top. This is, this is what it is. 
There's been some times where it hasn't been that, but man, ball walked the way it is, that, that stadium rocking the way that it is, that is Rocky Top for our recruits and, and for our players. It's what we've built, and, and uh, this is one of the great stories in all of college football. And, uh, uh, you know, that's why the stadium looks the way that it does. Um, you know, I thought our players handled the week itself in a really positive way. Um, I told them early in the week, <clears throat> like everything that we work for, just having been a player, like yeah, blocking out the outside noise is not real. Like it's everywhere. And so you're going to hear it. Um, understand the opportunity that you've created for yourself, right? Like what the game's going to look like and, and the opportunity that we have, college game day being here, the stadium, um, the energy, all of that. Understand what it is, and now it's about your preparation. And, and I told the players today uh, when we got done with our uh, walkthrough right before we got on the bus, man, soak it in. Enjoy enjoy a moment of, of ball walk. Enjoy what it looks like running out that tee today. And then reset and be fierce in the way that we compete for each other. And, and uh, I thought they prepared in a great way, and then uh, they were opportunistic and, and uh, competed really hard for each other today. Coach, the touchdown drive, 99 yards just before the half, how significant was that? And just is that kind of a snapshot of, of Hendon Hooker and a, and a senior quarterback? Yeah, um, obviously a huge in the way that the game played out, right? Uh, we score on that one. We score on the beginning of the, the third quarter. We're in some long yard situations uh, during the course of that drive. <clears throat> Got it going, made a huge play uh, with Ramel down the sideline. Um, there were some big plays in, in the football game. That Man, Hendon played his butt off tonight. Like He played at an elite level, decisive with the football, accurate with the football, you know, intermediate, short, long. Um, Used his legs at the right time, created big plays there, and, and uh, you know, just a, a tough competitor, man. And uh, offensively fed off of him all night long. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You got what's his name giving you the Gatorade bath after. It's like, <laughs> I, I'm like, what the, what is he doing? Uh, what's Theo his Vaughn? name? Uh, I talk about him all the time. Yeah, what the hell's Theo Vaughn doing on the football field? walking past Highway Patrol and giving the coach a Gatorade <laughs> bath. So, no, it was a wild environment. Everybody was excited. It was loud. The fans were in it, man. They helped keep this one in the game. And, uh, uh, man, Neyland was rocking. It was great to see.